Hello everyone and welcome back to Microsoft Flight Sim 2020 where I'm going to talk about how to control the airplane and also how to use the autopilot because frankly the flight training that they have here is completely inadequate uh, both in terms of control I mean it does a good job I guess of the basics not really actually it's it's uh, it's pretty sad but and the navigation was absolutely horrible so now I'm not a professional pilot but I've been flying flight sims for a long time since Flight Sim 4. I've done Flight Sim 4, 5, 98, uh, Flight Sim 9, Flight Sim 10 or X. And so I've been through the ringer as far as this stuff is concerned. And the first thing you need to do is set up your controls properly. Now, the game doesn't make it entirely easy. I've got a SciTech Aviator joystick and it didn't do it automatically for me, okay? Uh, see, it's got a question mark. What the heck kind of joystick is this? Uh, so if you're in this situation, uh, of course, your primary control surfaces, the ailerons, are left, right on the joystick. Um, elevator is up, down on a joystick. And the rudder axis, hopefully you have a joystick that twists. Now, if you don't have a joystick and you're using keyboard and mouse, my condolences. But it's going to be really hard. But this next thing is something you absolutely need, if you, especially if you have your keyboard and mouse. And that's to set the control trimming surfaces to something convenient. And this will be your main way of controlling the plane, uh, except on like takeoff and landing, and maybe a little bit of sightseeing. Okay, so it'll save you a lot of trouble with the keyboard and mouse because it's not going to be very finely controlled on, with the keyboard and mouse. It's going to feel very jerky. And if you want to just keep in level flight, you really don't want to rely on keyboard and mouse to do that. So uh, here you can also set the control trimming surfaces. And the rudder trim is also important for correcting the torque of the... Okay, so what is trim? <laughs> Let's back up a step here. Um, they're the main control surfaces, which are the ailerons. They're the big things on the outboard of the wings. And then the elevators are on the, the horizontal part of the tail. And the rudder is on the vertical part of the tail. But then on those there can be little tabs. They're just a little tiny portion of the control surface that independently actuates. It goes up and down on its own. And that's the trim. Or another way to trim is if there's another set of gears or some other way that will just finely tune the main control surface instead of uh, having it move so quickly. So those are, there's two ways of, well, there's probably other ways of trimming the control surfaces. But basically the idea is you have a way of more finely tuning uh, whether you're going up or down, left or right, or yawing. So mainly the rudder trim is used to correct for propeller torque. So if you've got one propeller spinning one way, the rudder uh, trim you will use to correct the other way. I haven't noticed that you have to do that much in flight sim. Uh, there are other simulators where, especially if you have like warbirds, where they have a really powerful engine in the front, you really, really need to do that. Otherwise, you will not take off. So the rudder trim is to fix that, and in those simulators, when you get into them, if you get into them, you should look for the rudder trim and make sure you do that. Aileron trim is, again, uh, for the left-right balance, you might need it uh, if there's a lot of wind or something like that, or if uh, I've broken flaps in certain simulators, so I've had to correct for the broken flap by using the aileron trim. Uh, elevator trim is what you're using the most, and it's what the autopilot uses to control the altitude. The autopilot doesn't actually move the elevator uh, in order to control the altitude. The autopilot just uses the elevator trim, and you'll see it uh, moving it up and down quite a lot in order to make sure that the plane remains stable and uh, continues in either ascent, descent, or a stable flight. So I'll demonstrate that in flight so that you can get a sense of that. By default, it's on numpad 7 and 1. It's been like that for ages past. On the joystick, though, uh, when you have it, you should have it on your hat switch. So the, I've got the aileron trim and elevator trim on my hat switch at the top of the joystick. A lot of people use that to control the camera. I don't because it's more critical to have the elevator control at my fingertip. And on real joysticks in the plane, uh, they, or even control yokes, they will have the elevator trim these days on a hat switch, so that's realistic. So it's super critical, it's the main way you're going to be stabilizing the plane. Okay, and uh, to that end, let's go ahead and take a look at how that works. Okay, we are now in the CJ4's cockpit, 
And if we want to see where the trim is in here, it's actually this switch here. So pitch trim nose down and nose up. So the pilot would actually use that switch to control it. In older airliners, you will see a wheel, even newer airliners maybe, uh, you'll see a pitch trim wheel on the side right here next to the throttle quadrant. And that's where it is. And you'll see it ominously moving quite a lot as the autopilot uses it to control the plane. But since you can't really see what's going on here very well, uh, you can actually see the elevator trim here. So this little display is where it shows the aileron trim and elevator trim. Since this is not a propeller plane, the rudder trim doesn't really play much of a part, so they don't even bother to show it. Uh, so, But you can't really see that very well, so I'm going to show it to you outside. You can see the trim is right here, okay, and it's set to takeoff, that's the TO right there. And we are going to demonstrate how to primarily use the trim to control the plane instead of using the main control, which will seem very fidgety to pretty much everybody. So anyway, throttle up and release sparking brakes. So. Different planes will have different takeoff trim. Uh, the sim automatically sets it for you to that range, so you don't have to worry about setting the takeoff trim unless you're starting from cold start. So gear up, flaps up. Okay, so I've already trimmed the plane a bit. You saw I moved the trim so that it's in this stable incline. Now, let's say I wanted to get into level flight. I realize that in level flight, it's going to start speeding up more, so I'm going to throttle down first. Throttle down first. Because I'm going to want to trim at the new throttle. So now I'm just using the trim to stabilize the plane. So I'm just manipulating, okay, it's going down, so I'm trimming up. You can see. And there can be pilot-induced oscillations, in other words, you keep trimming the opposite way and it keeps wiggling back and forth. But you'll have to feel it out and get used to it. And each plane is a little bit different on this too. So now I'm trimming down as it's going up and eventually we're going to find a happy medium where it's going to be nice and stable. So now I've sort of settled on 9% here on trim. And we uh, just uh, nudging back up, so I'm gonna nudge it a, a little bit lower because it's still creeping up there. I'm gonna throw it down a little bit more. That'll also help it to not go up as much. And again, different velocities will require different trim. So depending on your speed uh, or and altitude, you'll trim differently. The higher the altitude, the higher the trim will have to be for a given speed in order to keep it level. So yeah, but as you can see, we, we're getting close to a sort of level situation without using the autopilot. And uh, we can use aileron trim to turn as well, but that's not really recommended. That would only be for very fine-tuned turns. So, but again, we can, uh, if I let go of the stick, I haven't uh, trimmed it. Uh, we were getting a little bit lag here, but um, I haven't got the aileron trim flat, so it's going to keep rolling to the right every time unless I get the aileron trim to zero. If we go back into the cockpit, it doesn't really show the aileron trim very well, does it? But I know that I haven't got it right because it's rolling to the right. If you find yourself, if you let go of the stick and you start rolling one way, you can use the aileron trim to correct that. And of course, if you got the aileron trim set wrong, you're going to have to recorrect. Okay, so nice and stable. Whereas if we are, we would turn the plane with the joystick. You know, uh, turning like this is not bad, but descending and ascending can be a bit of a pain. You know, here it's easy to do a fairly controlled turn. Uh, let's say a thirty degree turn. That's usually the maximum you want to do is thirty degrees. And when you're doing your traffic pattern around an airport, that's probably a good thing to. Uh, Keep an eye on and make sure it's a 30 degree a constant turn will help when it comes to navigation uh, but let's not, and of course when you're turning uh, it will go down so inputting a little bit of upstick pressure might help uh, trimming while you're turning is probably not the best thing but 
Let's talk about the autopilot, which will also use the trim in order to control the plane. Uh, so we have numbers on the multifunction display here. This number right here is the autopilot altitude setting. And then there'll also be a bug that uh, moves on the speed and the vertical speed here for those. Uh, first things first, I want to set the vertical speed. So um, I guess we'll activate that. There's the vertical speed bug, that little blue one. And I'm going to set up here. And let's say we activate the autopilot by pressing AP. It'll automatically try and go up to that level. But we haven't set an altitude yet. So that's a problem. So rather than doing that, because it doesn't have an altitude set, I'm going to increase the altitude setting so it knows where to end up. It wants to know where to stop when it's going up. Right now it's just holding zero because it, it wasn't sure about where to stop. So let's say 15,000 feet and it looks like we've got some pitot tube issues. If you suddenly find yourself unable to read the speed, that's probably because your pitot tube's gotten a little bit cold. Now I have to remember where the heck that is in this plane. By the way, the, there's also a trim down here. That's also the trim. Okay, well, first of all, we can do the anti-ice, because I can see that... Oh, here's the pitot heat. Okay, pitot heat on. And... We could talk about crossflow, but as soon as we get the pitot heat on, we can see that our... our speed indication is revived. Anyway, sorry, sort of a sidetrack, but that's an important thing in case you find, you find yourself losing your speed indication. Okay, and so we're going up, but not really the way we... Oh, I think the autopilot's figured it out because we've got the altitude setting now. But sometimes you'll have to toggle the vertical speed off and on for it to figure out where it needs to go. So we're going to expect that it's going to continue at this rate up until it gets to 15,000 feet. And we could increase the rate up, but also increase the throttle because if you're going to go up faster, you'll need to have extra throttle. And it's a little bit choppy, right? I don't know why. I think it's because of the icing effects. I don't know. Okay. So that's, that's basically how you do the altitude with the autopilot. So it's going to end up at 13,000 feet. Now the heading is on this bug. And so adjust the selected heading to... And you'll see on here the heading indicator. There'll always be some. Di sometimes it's a dial, uh, a physical analog thing, but sometimes it's on this screen. And if you turn it, you can turn it to your set. I'm just doing the basic autopilot settings. There's a, you can see there's a lot of other settings going on here, uh, following nav and stuff like that. But we're going to set it to our current head. Uh, you know, let's set it to straight west and see it turn. Now, the airliners will also have a bank setting, and this also has a half bank, so that it won't go all the way to 30 degrees. 30 degrees, I think, is standard, so I'm going to press heading. After setting the desired heading, I'm going to press heading, and it's turning to west. And it'll, it looks like it's automatically set to 20 degrees. So a half bank will set, make it do it at 10 degrees. And on the airliners, you'll be able to set the bank angle yourself. There's a bigger um, toggle around the heading toggle that sets the bank angle. Okay, uh, I'm, uh, yeah, so I'm not going to do the flight director. Once you've got the heading and the altitude, you might want the speed though. Uh, except on an airliner, I generally manage that myself. Uh, and I haven't had much success with the speed hold feature of this plane. So I'm a little bit dubious about it right now but uh, you'll see the speed bug right here that's the light blue thing there and that's indicating what speed and we don't want to go over speed that's the main reason for using it but we'll see whether it's actually doing it I think you need might need to do flight director but I don't uh, I press flight director and it doesn't have it on and uh, pressing this doesn't seem to indicate see oh on the top here it shows what kind of autopilot features you've got activated so it's saying uh, autopilot's on the heading is activated the altitude is activated camp I don't know that's I'm not familiar with each plane is a little bit different 
so I'm not fully familiar with this plane yet. But, and it's saying 15,000 feet. And so it's going to try and hold 15,000 feet. It's doing that successfully. It's holding the correct heading. And frankly, I'll just manage the throttle. So that is the basics of the autopilot. And wow. Well, the Rockies are sure close by, huh? <laughs> it's a minor luck that while I was talking about all that stuff, I haven't smashed into something. We'll talk about navigation later and how to make sure you do not smash into something by setting the right altitude in the first place. And uh, that'll be a different video. I think it'd be good to take a look at a different plane to see how the autopilot works in that plane as an example because uh, every plane the autopilot setup is a little bit different so maybe a basic Cessna they never talked about the autopilot in the Cessna so let's take a look at that okay so I've picked this plane because I've actually had trouble with the autopilot before and I'm gonna see whether the um, trouble recurs again once again uh, the elevator trim you can see is actually uh, that's actually to disconnect the, the autopilot trim and this is the the pitch trim nose up and nose down on the yoke. So that gives the idea. And actually there's a tr trim wheel down here too. Alright, so trim is important is the point. So let's take it from outside so you can see what's going on with the trim as I take off. So I'm using the rudder manually. You can see the rudder turning in the back there in order to compensate for the propeller torque. But you could just use the rudder trim at the start in order to do that. And not all planes have rudder trim or aileron trim or elevator trim. So there might be some small planes that you encounter that don't have some of these features. Uh, they will be trickier to fly as a result. But they're small so, you know, most of the time you're just yanking them here and there anyway. Now, notice when I let go of the stick, I've let go of the stick, it's going down, so I'm trimming up. I let go of the stick again, now it's going up. But it's going up too fast, so I'm going to trim down a little bit. I don't want that much vertical speed, because I'm losing uh, airspeed that way. But let's see where it ends up. I do not have my hand on the stick right now. And it's going up about 300 feet per minute, 80 knots. That's very gentle. We could, and it's going up a little bit faster now. It'll probably end up in a good place like this. So that's fine. We've got a good ascent rate. And I don't need to touch the joystick. I'm not doing any manual movements right now. And we'll take a look at the autopilot. So uh, this is a little bit of a different setup than the Citation. And you might not have this exact one because it's a premium deluxe thing. You might have just the Cessna 172 with the G1000, uh, the glass cockpit. But uh, the 152 will have a similar cockpit to this, I think. And the way you adjust the heading for the autopilot here is actually to turn this knob next to this. And this is the heading bug for the autopilot. So we'll uh, set that to 330 degrees. And I'll tell, well, Let's adjust the altitude first. So this is showing the uh, target altitude. It's good to set that before doing anything else, I think. And then I'm gonna set the autopilot to engage. Tell it to hold the heading. So now it's gonna turn to the target heading. Okay, and so that's successful. And then I'm gonna allow it to go up to our target altitude. So let's go 500 feet per minute here. So that uh, that's working properly. So the order of operations is set the set the target altitude first, then uh, or the heading. Uh, either the heading out. Do both of them first, <laughs> and then uh, activate the autopilot. Then set the vertical speed. Okay, and now well, it should climb to 10,000 feet. And out here we want to keep an eye on the trim. Make sure that the autopilot is not maxing out the trim. Uh, one thing that can happen is if you set the... Hold on. 
when we talk to autopilot uh, to ATC. Talking to autopilot would be even more special. So let's say if you set the vertical speed too high, let's say you set it to a thousand, and you start losing airspeed, the autopilot will try to trim up further and further and uh, push it to its limit, and you will stall them. And so the first thing you should do when you uh, have autopilot on and you think you're stalling is to use the trim. Uh, disengage autopilot, use trim, push down on the trim to uh, because the autopilot has probably maxed out the trim on the upside. So that's sort of an instinctual thing, but, but you should probably be just monitoring it all the way anyway. Now inside it's a little bit hard to monitor the the trim, uh, it's actually this indicator right here. So it's a little bit out of the way compared to being on the main panel on the citation. But yeah, keeping an eye on that, making sure it's not going too far, we can demonstrate that. So let's say I uh, have too much vertical speed. And you can see the airspeed is dropping as a result. And the autopilot is going to use more and more trim in order to keep our nose up heading with the same vertical speed. And especially as we get very slow, it's going to speed uh, do that very dramatically. So we've stalled. Actually, it's doing it right. Actually, it's compensating itself. It's a very smart autopilot. It tried to pitch down, uh, tried to trim down, but it didn't do quite enough. It didn't actually max out this time. I'm impressed. It seems to be automatically compensating a bit, but now it's maxed out. So we're stalling. And of course, don't panic. Just turn off the all pot and trim down. Even though you are going down, note that the vertical speed is going down. The reason the vertical speed is going down is because you're stalling. You don't have enough airflow over the wings. It's not because you need to pull up. Do not pull up <laughs> if you're stalling. Uh, you should push down and you should trim down. Now our trim is zero. We're going down and we're increasing vertical speed. Now we can trim up again. We don't need to pull up on the stick. We just need to trim up a little bit. And we can stabilize very easily without actually pulling up like that. So we're going down again. We know we need a little bit of up trim on this. We've seen that previously. We need like 0.1 or something. Though we're going so fast we might not need too much. Anyway, so the Cessna 172 and 152 are great trainer planes because they're so forgiving in this sort of respect that um, as long as you know what to do to recover, you have plenty of time to do it. So I was talking away and I was stalling all the time and uh, managed to recover it fine. But the, of course that's tougher if you're very close to the ground. And so that's why takeoff and landing are the most dangerous parts of the flight. So we can re-engage autopilot, but this time we should decrease the vertical speed. Oh, oh. Okay, so this is the problem that I encountered before where it sort of maxes out the vertical speed. You see that? When I engage the autopilot, it, it seems to want to max out vertical speed. And it's probably maxed out our trim too, yeah. Now, if you uh, yank the plane a lot, the autopilot will automatically disengage. It hasn't done so yet, but it, uh, it, it has this problem where uh, sometimes when you engage it, it overdoes the vertical speed and see when I let go it's pitching up really sharply I'm just gonna disable it so watch out for that in some planes I don't know whether it's uh, a bug or whether it's something about the autopilot that I'm not quite understanding not all planes have that problem I, I, I feel like it's this default setting is set to the airliner vertical speed instead of the you know, a Cessna's vertical speed. But I'm not sure what's going on there. Sometimes when I engage it, and maybe it's just best to reset everything. I mean, but I've got 10,000 feet. 
uh, when I engage autopilot you expect it to retain the settings that it had before this up and down doesn't work right now and, but it still will sort of maxes out here in an unpleasant way I was trying to coax it down here. I'm gonna push down on the stick and uh, click down on the vertical speed. Even though it's already at 300, I don't understand why it should want to pitch up so wildly. Anyway, so if I, I've had some problems, so let me put it that way. But keep in mind that the iPod may be finicky. You need to keep an eye on it. And if it goes awry, just use your trim. <laughs> It's actually pretty easy to fly a plane very stably, just keeping attentive and making sure you're trimming. And to demonstrate this, I'll in fact trim this out, and then I'm going to use the drone cam to take a look around. And while using the drone cam, at least I can't seem to control the plane. So I'll have to rely on the fact that I've trimmed it properly. Now that is not to say that it doesn't take some practice getting your trim rhythm right, if you will. And I can't say that I'm like an expert on this either. So I'm gonna press insert and now we can take a look around. Oh, it's pitching up a lot. I have not done a good job. Why, why did it do that? Did it go on autopilot? I swear it did an autopilot sort of thing. Gosh darn it. Right when I'm trying to demonstrate something important, the sim is playing around with me. Okay, let's see. The down, max. 335. 335. And then maximum on the upside. One fifty, so maybe a little bit of trim up here. Maximum on the downside. One seventy. Fifty five, so trim up a little bit. So we're trying to get to zero on average. Right now on average we're going down. We're sort of turning a little bit, but I don't mind that too much. About 150 to the downside. So I think it's averaging zero. It'll eventually flatten out as it wiggles. But All right, let's try insert again and see what happens. Yeah, it suddenly pitches up. So apparently it engages the autopilot or something like that when I'm not looking. Uh, when I try and go in a drone plane mode, it tries to engage the autopilot. Maybe it's good to just use the autopilot in that case, but that relies on the autopilot being not suicidal. So I'm going to turn the altitude to very low, so it's not going to pay attention to the altitude. And I'm going to retrim down, because it's trimming up forcefully. I'm just going to go with vertical speed. And I want zero. So now we've got a vertical speed setting of zero and it's not paying attention to the altitude because I set it down to a low level and we're holding the heading that we set here and now <laughs> now when I press insert It looks a little bit more stable because it's on autopilot. So, well, that's one benefit of autopilot. It looks like just uh, pitch trimming it isn't satisfactory for using drone view. And we all want to take advantage of drone view, don't we? So anyway, with all that, I hope this has been somewhat helpful. Uh, if you enjoyed the video, please do press like. If you have any comments or suggestions, please leave them in the comment section below. And I'll see you next time.